Hi, I'm Tom and in this video I'm going to attempt to connect my ACO smoke alarms to Home Assistant using this ACO alarm panel interface and this Shelly i4. So why do I want to do this? Well, firstly, I'd like to be notified if my smoke alarms go off whilst there's nobody home. It's not like I'll be able to do anything directly, but having that extra few moments to maybe contact the fire brigade could make a huge difference. Secondly, I'd like to be able to trigger some automations in the event that my smoke alarms do go off, such as maybe turning on all the lights if it's dark. Let's start by talking about my current smoke alarm setup. When we had our house initially renovated back in 2021, we had two new wired smoke alarms installed, one on the landing and one in the hallway. When we had our kitchen extension done in 2024, a new heat alarm was added into the kitchen. Now, these days, newly installed smoke alarms are usually wired directly together so that when one alarm goes off, we'll say one alarm detects smoke, it triggers all the other alarms in the house automatically. As our heat detector was brand new, it wasn't possible to wire that into the existing two smoke alarms. To ensure that the smoke alarms would go off if the heat alarm went off, we were able to use one of these, an ACO Smart Link radio module. These are small modules that you can install inside the smoke alarms and heat alarms themselves, and they allow them to talk together wirelessly. So that means if my heat detector does go off, it will send a radio signal to the smoke alarms and then set all of the smoke alarms off at the same time, which is exactly what we want. However, ACO themselves go beyond these simple smart link modules. They offer something called an EI1000G, which is essentially a gateway between all of the smart link devices and the internet. Now, there's a few problems with this from my point of view. Firstly, it's really expensive at almost £200. Secondly, you have to use their cloud interface, so there's no local control possible with Home Assistant. And thirdly, you have to pay an annual fee uh, to cover the GSM access. Now, woe as I am to admit it, I did actually buy one of these units to try it out, but I just found the entire setup to be an awful rigmarole. There was installer accounts and admin accounts and user accounts and in the end, after jump through all the hoops, I couldn't even get uh, a developer account so that, I would, so that I could connect Home Assistant to it. So in the end, I couldn't even use it as I wanted to. Um, I simply boxed it up and returned it. Fast forward a couple of months and I don't quite know what I was doing or how this happened, but I came across the ACO stuff again, specifically this, the EI413 panel interface module. Now, this module is designed to connect into an existing panel, such as an alarm panel or a fire panel. I took a quick look at the installation instructions and it appeared to use relays for signaling the different conditions and that makes it perfect for local control. Whilst this module uses something called Radio Link, which is an older version of the protocol, uh, according to ACO's website, it should be backwards compatible with the Smart Link. As I showed at the start of the video, I have one of these here, so let's take a closer look at it. Okay, so on the front here, we have an LED and a button, which we use to control the pairing, and I'll demonstrate that later on. If we take a look inside, we can see there's quite a few different screw terminals. So up here, we have the power in, now it uses 11 to 30 volts DC and to provide that I'm going to use a standard LED driver module which will output 12 volts. Along the bottom we've got three terminal blocks and they're labelled CO2, fire and fault and they appear to be pretty standard, normally open, normally closed relays. And up here, we have um, a pair of terminals marked Alarm In. Now, according to the instructions, we can use these to actually trigger all of the alarms. 
So we can either provide power to the top pair here, or we can connect these two contacts here using a switch. That's quite interesting because it means I may be able to set off the smoke alarms or all the alarms in the house from Home Assistant. And maybe that's something I could connect to my house alarm or for some other conditions. We'll look at that in a little bit. So how do I plan on making use of the radio module? That is where the Shelly i4 DC comes in. The Shelly i range are designed to detect the status of inputs. So they're traditionally used to know, for example, when a switch has been turned on or turned off. In a recent video I did on kinetic switches, I was able to use a Shelly i3 to detect the status of a little wireless relay so that I could send that status into Home Assistant. The Shelly i4 is the latest revision of this unit, but the one I'm using is a Shelly i4 DC. So A, as the name suggests, it's actually DC, so this will offer it, operate between 5 and 24 volts, and B, it has four detection terminals, which will cover all the relays on the interface module with one to spare. So basically, I'm going to hook the interface module's relays up to the input terminals on the i4, power both of them directly from the LED driver, and then I will pair the interface module to my existing smoke alarms. So let me start by powering up the interface module. So this is the LED driver, and I've now wired that up to the relay module, there's no smoke, so that's always a good start. I'll now add the Shelly i4 into the mix. Okay, so both units are now powered up. We've got our Shelly and our interface module. And I've already taken the liberty of adding the i4 into Home Assistant. And I took the step of enabling the inputs. They're normally disabled by default, and you can see the four of them here. And we can actually test that by uh, using this cable and I'm just going to put it to the common here and then I'll touch terminal 4 and we should see it go on there's terminal 3 terminal 2 okay you get the idea so with the interface module and the i4 set up now the next step is to actually pair the ACO interface module with my existing smoke alarms and heat alarm. In order to do that, we have to do something called house coding, which is ACO's fancy term for pairing. I already have two devices that are house coded together as they contain the little SmartLink radio modules. So what I'll need to do is add the interface module into that existing group of house coded devices. So let's now head down to the uh, smoke alarm in the hallway, which has got a radio module, and we will start the house coding process from there. This is probably going to get a little bit Blair Witch project because I'm going to have to hold the phone in my hand. So bear with me. So this is the smoke alarm, and as you can see, uh, there's a little light and a little slot here. And actually in behind this is the smart link module. So the instructions say to push this in until we see a rainbow of colors. There we go. Okay. So that should now have enabled the house coding mode. And if I remember correctly, this should flash twice. Yeah, every five seconds to indicate that there's two devices currently in the network. Let's head back upstairs now and put the interface module into house coding mode. So what we want to do now is push the pairing button. And with any luck, this should start blinking three times. And I don't know if you caught that, but
it is blinking three times. So we got our three blue flashes, which means our interface module is now part of the existing SmartLink network, which is fantastic. I was a little bit worried that that wasn't going to work, just given Radio Link is older than SmartLink, and you know these things are never as straightforward as you plan. But in this instance, I was wrong. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect the smoke or the fire terminal on the interface panel into the Shelly i4 and then we can give it a test. So that's wired in now and what I've done is I've taken the common from the i4 and I've just run in that into the center screw terminal here which is the common and then I've connected switch one to the normally open terminal here. With everything in place, it's the moment of truth. So I'm going to warn my family. I'm going to bring up Home Assistant onto the screen. So you can keep an eye on input one. And I'm going to push the test button of the smoke alarm in on the landing. And this should hopefully turn to on. A few moments later. Okay, everybody stick your fingers in your ears. Stick your fingers in your ears. I'm going to try the smoke alarms. Stick your fingers in your ears. I should be doing this with a, like a stick or something. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Here we go. Ready? Did that work? I can see that it switched it detected power 16 seconds ago and then it cleared a second ago. So that means so that means that the relay module or the interface module successfully signaled the Shelly when the smoke alarms went off. So that's success. Brilliant. I really was worried that that just wasn't going to work at all, but it did. Now, so with the uh, first part of my plan complete, with that working, that's great. The next thing I want to try is the alarm in. Now, you'll remember at the top of the video, I said that it should be possible to trigger the smoke alarms by using the alarm in terminal on the board. So I'm going to give that a go now. As the Shelly i4 doesn't have a relay, I'm going to use one of my trusty Shelly 1s to do the job. Now, as luck would have it, the original version of the, the generation 1 version of these relays actually has the ability to operate in DC. Now, traditionally, they are powered by mains at 230 volts, but there's a little jumper hidden under here um, that will switch it from 230 to, I think, 12 volts, so maybe to between 5 and 24, just like the uh, i4. So let me switch the jumpers over now and get this added into my little mix of uh, stuff on my desk. Back to the desk, and I've added in the Shelly 1, so that's now taking power from the LED driver, and I've also connected the two terminals of the relay here, into the SW terminals of the alarm in. As before with the i4, I've also taken the liberty of adding this in to Home Assistant so it's ready to go. So if I now click this switch, the relay should close and the smoke alarms will go off. Just give me a moment to warn my family that I'm about to test this. A few moments later. Here we go. Nothing. I don't know if you can hear that, but the alarm is going off.
and it turned off. Ha! Huh. Second time's the charm. Okay, I didn't really expect that to work at all, but actually, brilliant. So that means I can now trigger my fire alarm from Home Assistant. So that's two for two. I can now listen for when my fire alarm is triggered, and I can also trigger my fire alarm. So let me wrap up there. The next steps now will be to take everything that's on my desk here and put it into some boxes and properly mount it on the garage wall just to tidy it all up. And then I will need to go through Home Assistant and Node Red and just set up the automations that I was talking about. If you've any questions on what I've done, please do ask in the comments below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you have, please do click that like button as that helps the YouTube algorithm to promote the video. If you do like this kind of video, please do check out some of my other videos because I, I kind of tinker with this sort of stuff all the time. And if you like any of my videos, please be sure to subscribe. Otherwise, that's it. I'm still a little bit in shock that that all worked, but I'm very pleased about that on this very sunny Sunday. Uh, I'm Tom, and thanks for watching.